Along with the vector scope, one of the most used graphs in Premiere Pro is the YC waveform. Now you can get to all your graphs by using this drop down tab here. And if I go down to the scopes, I've got one that says YC waveform. And Y stands for luminance and C stands for chrominance. So you're going to be able to see the luminance or if you like the brightness of the shot and the color of the shot. So if we click on the YC waveform, we have a graph that displays the chrominance and the luminance. However, it's rather difficult to compare it to the footage when we do it like this. So I'm going to go back to the composite video and I'm going to open up the reference monitor again. So Windows, Reference Monitor. I'm going to pull the reference monitor to just below and I'm going to change it from composite video to the YC waveform. Right, so what are we looking at here? Well, firstly, we have both chroma color information and luma luminance information and these two little bars to the right of the display are showing us the complete range of both now if I turn off chroma you can see that the green line shows the maximum range of the luminance in this shot which as you can see is very squashed if I turn back on chroma you can see that this purple or lavender bar here shows the maximum range of the chrominance or the color in the shot for this particular tutorial I'm really just going to be looking at luminance so what do we have here? From left to right in this monitor represents the image from left to right. Okay, so the left side of this monitor refers to the left side of this image and the right side of this monitor refers to the right side of the image and in the middle is looking at the window here. However, from bottom to top we are looking at the dark points of the image and the light points of the image. Now, if you look at this window here you can see that we've actually got a peak just here which refers to the window. It's just showing us the luminance values. Now we've got some pretty dark values over here and as you can see we've probably got the darkest parts of our shot over here. However there are still some bright points which are reflected in these highlights. So that's why we've got these highlights showing here. So this monitor is showing us the range from dark to light in our shot. And we can see just by looking at the shot that it's not exposed properly However, when you look at this monitor, you can clearly see that it's nowhere near the range it should be. Now, um, generally speaking, for NTSC, the range in America is from 7.5 to 100. However, in Japan, it will be 0 to 100. And you have this little button at the top that says Setup IRE. If you have that ticked, you have the analog 7.5 versions. If you untick it, you've actually got digital version. I tend to work in PAL and HD, but even so, this is a very good way to work IRE standing for the Institute of Radio Engineers and this is their reference. If you go above 100 you are going to clip your colors and possibly cause blooming. If you go below zero it could cause problems the other end as you're going blacker than the system that you're operating with can cope. Now when it comes to the chrominance option it's always good to be able to overlay it on top of the luminance and make sure it's pretty well matched. If there is a big mismatch between the chrominance and the luminance then your shot's going to look particularly odd. Okay so how can we use this graph to make this shot look a lot better? I'm just going to zoom into this shot slightly and I'm going to add in the fast color corrector, one that we've used many times before. So go type fast and then we've got the fast color corrector and drop it on the clip. Now I'm going to open up my effects controls and I'm going to open up the fast color corrector and I'm going to go down to the levels and I'm going to start playing around with these levels. Now clearly this shot is very condensed in the middle. We really want the dynamic range of the brightness to go near enough to 100 on these blown out images and on these highlights all the way down to well at least 7.5 which is this dotted line as you can clearly see down here. We've got lots of headroom at the darks and lots of headroom at the lights so therefore we can pull the input in until we start to see these darks approaching the 7.5. So let's start putting the input level in and see, as you can see, it's pulling the darks down and we're getting to that 7.5 layer about there. The best way of telling is actually with this bar at the side because this shows you the minimum and the maximum or the maximum and minimum, whichever way you want to look at it. And if you look at the shot already, it looks a lot better because we've extended the range of the brightness. Now we can do the same with the brighter areas because they clearly just go to about 70 we want them nearer to 100. So let's start pulling those in until we can get that nearer to 100. We're adding a lot of lightness into the clip, that's about right. Now we might not be completely happy with that, we might feel it's slightly overdone. 
However, we can see clearly on our graph that we now have a very good brightness range and we can overlay the chrominance again and the chrominance is just a little bit greater on both sides which is okay. What we might want to do is perhaps just bring them down a tad. There we go. And now if we aren't happy with how the shot looks we can actually play with the gamma slider in the middle and we can darken it up a bit or we can lighten it a bit depending on what we want to do. I'm going to darken it up a bit. There you go to make it a little bit more moody. And so what we have done is we have used this graph to give us very clear information so we know how far we can increase the bright areas, how far we can increase the dark areas by pulling these sliders in and yet not going over broadcast safe limits. Incidentally, your eyes are not quite as sensitive to chrominance as they are to luminance. Luminance, the eyes are very sensitive to, but chrominance, the eyes aren't quite as sensitive to, so you have to make more change for chrominance to actually make a difference. So there you go, let's just scroll up and minimise this effect and turn it on and off and see what we've gone from and what we've gone to. So this is before, and as you can see it's a very compressed image with all the colour and the brightness squashed into a very small area. And then by simply applying the fast colour corrector and using the levels effect, we've created this and made it look a lot more punchy and powerful. So that's how you can use the YC waveform from this drop down here. The composite video would be the standard video and then the YC waveform would be the one that we've been looking at to be able to make very good choices and decisions to be able to stay within broadcast limits and to know that the edits you're making will remain safe. The only other thing to say is this, this intensity slider here is only to do with the actual graph that you see here. It's got nothing to do with the image. If you turn it right down, you'll turn the intensity right down of the image. And if you turn it right up, you increase the intensity of the image. It's just so that you can see things more clearly. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.